Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. In September, Chinese President Xi Jinping and the Communist Party's Central Committee laid out a plan for a new era in which the Chinese Communist Party has better control of private business in China. The plan was detailed in a 5,000-word statement, and all regions and departments in the country have been told to follow the new guidelines. It had a long-winded title, Opinion on Strengthening the United Front Work of the Private Economy in the New Era. The ultimate goal is for the party to have ideological leadership of private enterprise. Overall, there are more than 100 measures, including guidance on selection of personnel to implement the measures. According to the new provisions, private firms will need a certain amount of CCP registered employees, which is already a long-term practice in large private firms, but not smaller ones. Just a few weeks later, Mr. Xi personally intervened to block the $34 billion initial public offering to one of the China's biggest private firms, Ant Group. Chinese leadership has developed a deepening conviction that markets and private entrepreneurs are unpredictable and not to be fully trusted. The view that the state planners are better at running a complex economy has gained currency this year, with Beijing relying heavily on state directives to engineer a V-shaped recovery from the shock of COVID-19. The message isn't lost on entrepreneurs. They are reorienting their businesses to appease the state or giving up private enterprise altogether. The move is risky because it will dull the kind of innovation, competitive spirit, and unbridled energy that powered China's explosive growth in recent decades. The economic policies that helped nurture e-commerce giant Alibaba, tech conglomerate Tencent, and other global success stories seem to be at an end, says economists, economists inside and outside China. As a result, Chinese companies are becoming less like American ones, which are driven by market forces and depend on private innovation and consumption. The private investment in manufacturing and infrastructure peaked in 2015. It has been shrinking since then. As a result, Chinese economy becomes less efficient. The amount of capital input needed to generate one unit of economic growth has nearly doubled since 2012. This is partly because China's state-owned enterprises have swollen in size. These state-owned enterprises are often less productive than private businesses. Now, big state companies are often absorbing smaller ones to keep them going and reconfigure the smaller firms' strategies to serve the state. Transactions involving state firms buying into private ones exceeded $20 billion last year, more than double the 2012 level. Beijing Origin Water Technology Corporation, a provider of sewage treatment services that competes with the likes of General Electric, was one of the target firm. It was started in 2001 by Wen Jinping, an engineer who had studied in Australia. He was eager to help clean China's polluted water supply and take advantage of the country's increasingly open business environment. As demand for water purification grew, Mr. Wen's business thrived. An initial public offering in 2010 helped turn him into a billionaire. In 2018, he made Forbes magazine's list of China's richest people, with a reported net worth above $1.1 billion dollars. Over time, Mr. Wen took on more risk, pledging his shares to borrow more and finance bigger projects. A government deleveraging campaign launched under Mr. Xi to curb excessive risk-taking forced companies to pare back on debt and caused stock markets to swoon, sending the values of Mr. Wen's share down. His lenders started calling in loans. A big state-owned company swooped in, bought controlling state in Beijing Origin Water. Mr. Wen's stake was reduced to 
Now, instead of focusing on the domestic market, Beijing Origin Water says it plans to help facilitate the party leadership's Belt and Road Initiative. This is a huge infrastructure program promoted by Mr. Xi to pull Asian, European, and African nations into Beijing's orbit. Often, government officials just want to make sure large private companies are adhering to the state's goals and the policies. To that end, the state's installing more Communist Party committees in corporate offices and encouraging to play more assertive roles in decision-making. Based on Wall Street Journal's report, in October, Sanyue Industrial Corporation, a private maker of electronics in the southern city of Dongguan, formed the first party committee in the company's 11-year history. It did so after the government told the company it needed to. The committee plans to meet often to study the spirit of government policies and Mr. Xi's speeches. Three other private companies in Dongguan also set up party sales recently, including an electronics maker, an auto parts manufacturer, and a chemical company. Chinese officials close to the leadership say Mr. Xi's thinking has been influenced by excesses that emerged under predecessors Jiang Zemin and Hu Jintao, when corruption and environmental degradation were rampant. Mr. Xi was also influenced by market disruptions that rattled the early years of his rule. Now, Beijing directly supervises 128 state firms, although that's down from about 140 in 2012. The enterprises have grown larger, encroaching more on the private sector. Even Liu He, the leadership's top economic advisor with a reputation for supporting market reforms, summarized Beijing's plan for the state sector for the next three years. I quote, State-owned enterprises must become the competitive core of the market." Unquote. The private sector in China is for sure shrinking, if not disappearing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly.